For most digital artists, the paintbrush tool and the erase brush tool are essential for creating artwork. They are both raster tools, so to access them, we need to move to the pixel persona. To switch personas, tap on the designer persona in the top left corner and choose the pixel persona from the menu. Now the tools panel has been populated with raster tools. As their names suggest, the paintbrush tool is used for painting and drawing and the erase brush tool is used for removing brush strokes. They both work in conjunction with the brushes panel, which can be found on the right studio. To start painting, I can select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel and then open the colour panel and select a colour. Now I can zoom into an area where I'd like to start painting. Raster brush strokes can only be placed on pixel layers. I can create a pixel layer by opening the layers panel and tapping add and then pixel layer. Or I can simply touch the screen with my finger or Apple Pencil to start painting and a tip dialog will appear letting me know that a pixel layer has automatically been created. By default, it will paint with a basic round brush, but there are lots of other brushes to choose from. If I open the brushes panel again, we can choose a different brush from the range of categories. Dry media is great for adding texture. Brushes from this collection are designed to look like chalks, crayons, charcoals and pastels. I'd like to have another go at this now that I have a more suitable brush, so I'll erase my previous strokes by selecting the Erase Brush tool from the Tools panel. Making sure the correct layer is selected, I can erase the brush strokes. Now I can double tap my Apple Pencil to switch back to the Paintbrush tool. Interestingly, the double tap function changes depending on which tool you have selected. It is paired with the action that's most likely to be performed when using that tool. For example, when working with the Refine Selection tool, a double tap will apply the selection. In this case, double tapping will switch between the paintbrush and erase brush. If you'd like to choose a different action, you can customise these in Preferences under the Pencil Settings. Now I'll try painting with the classic crayon brush that I previously selected. I'll double tap to the erase brush to remove any parts that have gone over the edges. You can also select brushes for the Erase Brush tool to change how the strokes are removed. I'll select the same textured brush to break up the clean edges. Now I'll tap the Zoom button to view the whole document and double tap my pencil to return to the Paintbrush tool. To the left of the document view are some sliders. These settings affect how the Paintbrush tool lays down pixels. Sliders with white dots indicate that there are more options available. For example, tapping the accumulation slider will reveal the opacity settings and a second tap will move back to the accumulation settings. Tapping the flow will take us to the hardness settings. You can't change the hardness of a textured brush, so I'll switch back to the basic brushes and choose a round brush. Now I can move the slider and reduce the hardness of the brush to give it a soft edge. Or I could tap the number to type a specific percentage. This is a good opportunity to paint some soft clouds so I'll open the Layers panel and select the Clouds layer. I'll also select White on the Colour panel. When wet edge is enabled, the paintbrush strokes will have a more opaque edge to the stroke to mimic the appearance of watercolours and washers. If you don't want this effect, you can turn it off on the Context toolbar. Also on the Context toolbar, you can access the two stabiliser modes. The Rope Stabiliser pulls the brush behind it as if it's on a rope. The window mode smooths the stroke by averaging sampled input positions over an area and it has an elasticated feel. When you have one of the stabilizers selected, you can tap the width slider to adjust the stabilizer length. To finish these clouds, I'll select a large smudge brush and blend it all out. And then zoom out again and switch back to the paintbrush tool. The flow and accumulation determine how the brush effect is applied. This is particularly effective with textured brushes. I'll show you on this brickwork here. I'll open the Layers panel and clip a pixel layer inside the brickwork to clip the brush texture to the bricks only. I'll go to the Brushes panel and find a textured brush and then to the Colour panel to choose a pale grey colour. A flow of 1% is very slow and 100% is immediate. The flow is set to 62, which is quite strong so I'll two finger tap to undo and lower the flow slider.
I could also lower the opacity of the layer in the layer options to reduce the effect. This creates a nice highlighted effect on the bricks. Symmetry can also be enabled from here and you can set up the number of lines of symmetry and their behaviours. If you're interested in learning more about the symmetry and mirroring features, there is a tutorial video that covers this. The paintbrush tool and erase brush tool can also be used alongside vector tools. I'll show you in this next example. We can use the paintbrush and erase brush to add raster elements to vector illustrations. Here I have a document that's made up of vector curves and I'm going to add some noise texture to the cup. I'll move to the pixel persona and open the layers panel and select the cup vector curve. Now I'll go to the brushes panel and look in the textures category to find a textured brush. I'll tap across to the opacity settings and reduce the opacity to 30% and start painting some noise texture onto the mug. Again, the pixel layer has automatically been created for me, and if we look on the layers panel, it has been clipped to the vector curve layer. When I'm happy, I can double tap my Apple Pencil and switch to the Erase Brush tool to clean up some of the edges, and even select a textured brush to erase with. Another way you might like to use the paintbrush tool is for masking. I'll move to this final example to demonstrate this. I want to remove the clean edges to this photo. I could do this by rasterizing the photo and erasing the edges, but this is destructive, meaning that it cannot be reversed. Instead, I'll move to the pixel persona and use the move tool to select the photo. I'll open the layers panel and choose to add a non-destructive mask layer. Now I can select the paintbrush tool and a textured brush. Black will mask layer content, enabling us to see the object below, in this case the black background. So I'll select black and start painting along the edges of the image. If I've encroached too far into the image, I can switch to white and paint the mask away to reveal the layer content. So that was a look at how to get started using the paintbrush tool and the erase brush tool and some of the different ways that they might be used. Thanks for watching.